Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be doing an example from the textbook Holiday and Resnick, Fundamentals of Physics. This is from Chapter 1, the unit on measurement. I just wanted to go through this to give a thorough explanation, one that I think is a little bit better than the book for those who are curious or maybe just wanted a more thorough explanation. So the question is, the world's largest ball of string is about 2 meters in radius. To the nearest order of magnitude, what is the total length, L, of the string used in the ball? So we're given 2 meters in radius, and we want to find the total length. Something else to keep in mind for this problem is that we are only concerned with accuracy to the nearest order of magnitude. And something that's a little bit confusing in the textbook is... Only in the explanation are you told to make the assumption that the edge length of the string is 4 millimeters. And I feel like that's crucial to the problem. So if you were trying to do it without that piece of information, I wouldn't worry about it. Usually in a test situation or otherwise, that would be given. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out our ball of string. down a little bit. Okay. And we know that our radius is equal to 2 meters. So the information we have in the problem so far is we have our radius, we have our edge length of the string is equal to 4 millimeters. We can also call that 4 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. Keep everything in one unit. So how we're going to relate to find the length, as shown later in the problem, is through volume. So we know that the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. And now for relating the volume of the ball to the string the way that the textbook decides to approach it is we're going to assume that the string is essentially a rectangular prism. Draw out my prism. And so the reason that we're doing this is in real life the string would be circular in nature, obviously. However, there are certain gaps in between the string as it's bound about itself that we want to account for. So we're going to slightly overestimate the string. So to find the volume of this prism, we're going to say, let's say edge length D, we'll call this D, D, and then length. So the volume of the prism, or actually the string in our case, is D squared times L. So obviously the string and the ball are one and the same. So we're going to decide to equate these equations to solve for length. So we'll say d squared times L is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. And some of the assumptions made in the textbook, obviously we only care about accuracy to an order of magnitude. And we know that pi is roughly 3.14. And since we're multiplying that by 4 over 3, we can go ahead and cross both of those out as an approximation. So now we're left with the edge length times the length squared is equal to 4r cubed. From here we can arrange our equations to solve for the length in specific. So we can say the length is equal to 4r cubed over the edge length squared. So we can now say length is equal to 4 times our radius cubed, which is going to be 8 meters cubed over our edge length squared, 
which is going to be 4 times 10 to the negative 3 squared. We can then simplify this to 32 meters cubed over 16 times 10 to the negative 6. And so we can actually, if we're clever, and this is meters squared, can't forget our units, solve this without a calculator. So our units are correct. We're going to be left with 2 meters divided by 10 to the negative 6. And obviously, since this is the denominator, we can bring it up. We can write this as 2 times 10 to the 6 meters. This is actually 2 million meters. So to explain what's kind of confusing about this problem is you're asked to make an assumption and approximate with an order of magnitude. And the edge length, you have to read a little bit later in the problem and take that information and apply it and overestimate the string. You can also get a somewhat accurate measurement if you were to take the string to be circular in nature. The only difference is obviously the surface area if it was circular would be pi r squared. And you could still solve for the length by saying the volume of the string is equal to pi r squared times length is equal to 4 pi over 3 r cubed. And you can see it's relatively similar. You get a slightly different answer, but both are relatively accurate for the purpose. Anyways, I just wanted to go through this problem a little bit explain it out, and hopefully it helps someone else out. Thanks for watching.